This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. If you've seen my character modeling streams, you've probably noticed the countdown timer that I have in the beginning. Today, that's what we're going to make. The summary for this video is pretty short. First, we'll make a timer that counts forward, and then we'll add some nodes that make it count down. As always, if you want the project file for this video, I always share those on Patreon, where you can also see my videos early, get coupon codes for free products, and get files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.2 for this one, but I did try this in 3.1 and it worked fine. So you don't have to update to 3.2 for this to work. So first we just need to add an object in um, to add our geometry nodes to. So add in a plane or whatever you want. And now I'm gonna go to the geometry nodes workspace. So if you have one up here, you can click on that. If you don't use the plus button, go to general and it should be in here somewhere. So click on that. So in here, we're just going to make sure we have our plane selected, and I'm gonna click the plus to add a new geometry nodes tree. So we don't need this group input node, so I'm just gonna select that and delete it with X. And I want to add in some text, so shift A, and under text right here, we have string to curves. So we can just plug this in to the output, and we can basically just type in whatever we want right here and it will appear in our scene right there. So first of all, I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna rotate it on the X by 90 degrees like that. If you want this to be centered, you can change that right here from left to center like that. And I wanna change the font to something a little different. So we can just hit this folder button right here and I have a fonts folder. And the one that I like to use is called source code. Um, I'll choose the medium one right here. And now we have a different font in there. I also wanna fill these curves in. So for that, you can just search for fill curve, drop that in and that will fill it. And my colors are different because I have a matte cap on over here. So I'll just turn that back to studio so it looks you know, the same as yours most likely. Um, I also wanna extrude this so it's not completely flat. So we can add in the extrude mesh node at the end and I'll just make this a little smaller like that. And I also don't need individual checked, so I'll turn that off. And now we have some 3D text right here. Pretty simple. Most of what we're going to be doing is plugging things into the string right here. So I'll hit Shift A. Under text, we have value to string. And we can just plug this directly into the string right here. And you can see when we move this, it's making this value show up over here. And it also goes into the negative like that. We also have another node called the scene time right here, and it gives us the seconds in the frame. So I'm just gonna plug the seconds directly into the value right here. And now when we press the space bar to make it play, it will count the seconds that go by, and you should be able to see the frames that we're on right here. So to make this a little easier to control, I'm just gonna hit space bar again to make that stop. I'm going to add a timeline over here. So I'm gonna drag that up from the corner and just change this to timeline like that. And now we can, you know, click and drag this right here to change the frame we're on. And I'm also going to change the end frame to something just like really high so that it doesn't like start over. So the nice thing about the scene time node is that it outputs seconds, which means that if you come over here to frame rate, you can change this to whatever you want and it'll still move at the same time over here, which is pretty nice. You don't have to like divide the frame number by the frame rate, which is what you had to do before geometry nodes. So there is one problem with plugging the seconds straight into this value right here, and that's if we go to frame 15, you'll see that it, or past 15, uh, you'll see that it goes up to one, even though this should only be one when it gets to frame 30, because again, we have this 30 frames per second, when we turn this to 30, it should equal one second. And you can even see that if you hover over here, it'll tell you, you know, the seconds in decimal form. So this is only halfway through. That's just because it's rounding up. So to make it not do that, we can add in a math node. Basically what we want to do is just get the full value, the zero, and we don't want any of the decimals. So there's actually a node in here called truncate right here. And you can see the description is the integer part of A removing fractional digits, which is basically just what I said. It's gonna take the zero, but it's not gonna take any of those decimal points. So we'll put that in here. And now this should only turn to one when we get to frame 30 and it works fine. 
All right, so now we have this working, but another problem that happens is when we get to 60, you can see it will go above 60. And normally with timers, it'll get to 59 and then it'll go back to zero. So we can make it do that with another math node. So I'll just duplicate this with shift D, put it after, and we'll change this to modulo right here. And you can just set this to 60. And so if you hover over this, you can see we're at value 66, but it's only showing six. Basically what modulo does is whatever value you put in here, whenever it reaches it, it'll just go back to zero. So once it goes through here, it's only giving us the six. So that's how it's working. But at this point, we're above one minute. So it would be nice to have like a one right here. So we can grab that value by basically just taking this and dividing it by 60 to get the minute amount. So we'll just duplicate this, plug this in here, and we'll change this to divide. And it's still set to 60 because I duplicated it over. And now we need to join these two together. So shift A and under text, we have join strings right here. So let's just move this value to string because this outputs a string. This is looking for a string input. So we can't really plug a value in here. We need to plug this in there and we need a second value to string to plug the, the minutes into. So we can plug this in right here. Just make sure that this is on top because you can reorder these so that it would be on the bottom. You want to make sure this one is on the top. And now we can plug this in here. And it says 12, but we want it to say one colon two. So we can use this delimit right here, expand that delimiter, and we can just plug in whatever we want. I'll use a colon. So now it'll tell us if we go above one minute, but again, we'll have a similar problem because of the rounding issue. So we need to truncate this. I'll put it after the division right here so that this only outputs a one when this value right here actually reaches one. So now it should turn over properly like that. So we're having a new problem now where when this goes above one right here, you can see that instead of saying like zero one, it just says one. So when the seconds value is under 10, I want it to put a zero right here. So it says zero one. We don't have that problem when it goes above 10, it looks like the right amount of digits. So we can do this. We'll just make some room right here and I'll add in a compare node like that. And the value we want to plug into here is this modulo amount. Right now it's under 10. We can plug that in right here and change this to less than, set this to 10. So now it's saying when this modulo amount is less than 10, this value should be true. Okay, so now we can add a switch node and set this to string, plug it in right here, and we can set the string value to be different whether you know this result is true or false. So when this is under 10, we can make it be a zero, and when it's over 10, we can have it do nothing, which is, you know, you just don't fill it in. So now you can plug this into the join strings, but when we do this, you'll see that it's adding a colon between everything that's being plugged in here. So we actually don't want to do that. We need a separate join strings right here. And I'll unplug that too. We can plug these two in here and we can plug this into the other one. And you just want to clear this field right here so that, so that it doesn't add that extra colon. So now that should work. Let's test it out. When this value is below 10, it should add that zero like that. And when it goes above 10, it should get rid of it. See, it's working fine. Good. Once again, just make sure when you're plugging this in that it's on the top and not below. Otherwise, it'll add it after. And, you know, that's not good. So if you want to jump back to zero quickly without just like entering this in, you can click this button right here and it'll make it jump back to zero. Or if you hover over it, you can see the shortcut is shift and left arrow, which is what I use all the time like that. You can jump to the end and to the beginning, which is nice. And so these are all of the nodes to make a timer that just counts up. Let's take a break to talk about the sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an online marketplace where you can buy and sell 3D models. They have more than 3 million models to choose from, and deciding which models you want to download is actually pretty fun because you can inspect them in the browser to see them from any angle and check out the materials and geometry. Sketchfab also has importer add-ons that make it really easy to get your models into your projects. So if you're looking for assets to fill your scenes, check out Sketchfab. All right, now let's talk about if you want this to count down. So this is actually pretty easy and we don't have to do that much. 
I'll just um, add a reroute with a shift, right click and drag like that. That's a Node Wrangler thing, by the way. You can just enable that under Edit and Preferences right here. So basically what we're going to do is just add another uh, math node right here, and I'll set this to subtract. And you want this to be plugged into the second one and set this to zero like that. So I'll just go back to the beginning. And now it's counting backwards from zero, but you can see an issue. It's saying zero, negative three, negative four. Um, and obviously we don't want that. So what we can do is just add a math node right here and set this to absolute. And absolute, basically what it does is it just takes negative numbers and turns them positive. So you can see it's like negative 7.6 right there, and it's just outputting the same number, but positive instead. So that will clear up that issue. And if you want this to be offset, you can you know change this number right here like that. And when we press play, it'll just count down. But I like to leave this set to zero. And instead of offsetting it like that, we can add in another node just set this to add, and we can add in whatever amount of seconds we want in here. When we go back to the beginning, um, you can see right now this is set to 60, but it's showing us 59. Um, that's because we're at frame one. So we're not actually at zero seconds. You can see right here, it's 0 0.3 repeating. If we set this to zero and go back to frame zero, it'll work just fine because this is zero seconds. We could also add uh, two separate spots, one for minutes and one for seconds. So I'll just add a second one right here. This one will be for minutes. And I'll duplicate this and change this to multiply. We want it to multiply by 60. Plug this in here. And I'll set this back to zero and go back to frame zero. So now whatever value we set this right here will be minutes instead. So I'll set it to one. You can see it adds you know, one minute. So one thing we can do to make it so that there's no decimal values like this is I like to use um, integer nodes right here. And, you know, that's basically what it does is it doesn't allow decimals. It's just whole numbers. So we can use that for the seconds and for the minutes. That's what I like to do. And now you can scroll this a little more easily and it looks clean. I just like that. So that's how you would get it to count down. You can decide whatever number you want to start with. One thing that I don't like is that it goes into negatives right here. I don't really think it needs to go past zero. So there are a few ways to make it not do that. Um, I'll just move these over. And basically, we're going to do another thing similar to how we did over here. We're going to say that if this value right here is less than zero, to just stay zero. So we can bring in the less than right here, or the this is a compare node. So if you need to find this again, you can just search for compare and that'll give you this node. So we're gonna plug this into here. Again, this value right now should be negative 13, what we're seeing here. We're gonna say if this is less than zero, then do something. So we need to add another switch node right here so that we can tell it what to do when it's less than zero. Uh, we don't want this string, we want this to be the same color, which is a float. So we'll just change this to float and put it right here. When this is false, it'll give us this right here. And when it's true, it'll just be set to whatever we have right here, which is zero. So we can plug this in like that. Now we'll go back to frame zero, make sure that's set to zero, and we'll add a few seconds on like that. And we'll just press play and see if this works. So it should count down and get to zero and that's where it stops. Uh, and you can see the frames are still moving right here. So it's checking to see if this number is less than zero. And if it is, it's going to use the true output over here. So now we don't have to worry about it going into the negatives. There is another thing you can do that I think is pretty neat. If you want, instead of saying zero like this and staying there, you can have it display like a different word or something. So that would be um, over here. Basically, instead of changing the value, we can put it over here and have it change the string, similar to how we did right there. We'll just set this to string, place it right there. And right now we have true set to zero, but we could have it say like done or something like that. And we can just use the same uh, compare node over here, plug it in to the switch like that. I'll just, I'll just add a reroute so it's not cutting through, it's a little cleaner. Now let's go back to the beginning and see how that looks. Playing, 
gets to zero, and then when it would start going into the negatives, it just says done instead. So this is nice because you can have it say whatever you want. Alright, that's it for this one. If you want more Geometry Nodes videos, check out my playlist, and feel free to leave video suggestions in the comments. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.